Hi, my name is Chris Bosberg. I'm with the Brooks Equine Genetics Lab here at Cornell University. I'm here to talk to you today about the Get a Leg Up on Science project that we're working on. Um, here you'll be learning how to measure your own horses, pull hair for DNA samples, and a little bit about horse safety. Hi, I'm going to show you what you're going to be receiving in the collection kits that we're going to mail out to you once you respond that you'd like to participate in our study. So the first thing you'll see in the box is a bag for you to hold all the tools that we send you. Um, the first tool that we'll give you is a clipboard, and this is going to be great for you to hold all your papers down while you're me out measuring the horses. We also give you a pen and a notepad so that you can jot down notes that you observe about your horse, because we'd like you to take all the observations you can. The next thing that you will receive is a tape measure. So you'll use this to take the 35 measurements that we, uh, we're asking you to take. Next is a lot of paperwork. So the first page here is a quick start guide. It's going to be asking, and, or it's going to be showing you basically the quick rundown of what papers you need to do first and look at first in order to do the study. The next page is a letter. It's just basically talking a little bit about the study so far, what we're hoping to accomplish with it, and the long-term goals of it. The next page is an equine release form. There are two copies of this in this kit. We, uh, we are asking you to fill out one and send it back to us. And the second one you can keep for your own records. And it's really just saying that we're going to keep your samples confidential. And it allows us to use the samples in our study. The next thing is a measurement booklet. Um, it's going to show you all the different measurements you need to know. They'll I'll talk a little bit about horse safety as well as the parts that you should know of the horse. And this will help you when you're out measuring your horses. The next thing you'll get is an envelope with, for each horse that you're going to measure. The first page here, on this side, it's asking for you to record the 35 measurements. The back side is asking for some basic information about the horse, like its breed, age, etc. This last page here uh, is a hair sample page for you to tape down the hair sample. Um, and we ask that you have the bulbs up, and it tells you how to do it right here. And once you're all done, you can put the DNA sample and measurement sheet into this envelope and mail it back to us. Hi, I'm Ann Steiger. I am a graduate student in the Brooks Lab. And I'm here to show you, talk about a little bit about safety, show you all the measurements, and how we pull hair for the Get a Leg Up on Science project. So the most important process is safety. So if you're under the age of 18 and you're taking body measurements, you want to wear a helmet while you're taking the measurements. So the next part about safety is you want to make sure that your head, if the horse's head is down, your head is never above the horse's head in case it comes up and they can hit you. The other part is to make sure you don't get stepped on by the horse. So you never want to put your foot here or here. Always want to stay at the outside of the horse. And as you're moving along, it's always a good idea to be talking to the horse and then run a hand along the body. And then when you come to the back end of the horse and you're doing the back leg measurements and pulling the hair, you always want to stay to the side of the horse. You never want to be directly behind the horse. The closer you are to the horse, if they do kick you, it's not going to be as bad as if you were out here. There's a lot more force in a kick when you're this far away from the horse versus right here. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to take the measurements. So the first thing you're going to have is your measuring tape. And what I always like to do before I start is let the horse sniff the tape. Make sure they're not going to be afraid of the tape. After that, this is when I do my qualitative scores. And these are actually explained really well in your kit handouts, so we're not going to do that right now. We're going to jump into the measurements now. So your first measurement is an eye-to-eye -eye width. So this is one where you're going from the corner of the eye to the corner of the eye, and you're pulling your tape straight. And your tape does have two sides, so you want the side that's an inch, that shows the inches. So in this case, I like to brace my hands on the horse's face, in the corner to the corner. So she is six and seven eighths of an inch. The next measurement we have is the jaw width. And this is one that it's really important to do just the bones. So you want to feel, so she's kind of fat. <laughs> So you want to feel for the widest point of the jaw on the outside edge and so that you're not underneath the horse. You find your edge, hold it here, and then I find the other edge, pinch off, and then read. So she is five and seven eighths. 
The next measurement is head length. So this one, you're measuring from the pole to the top of the nostrils. So in this case, she is 19 and 1 8 of an inch. The next measurement is muzzle circumference. And this you want to measure right below the cheekbone. So you see the bony protrusion here. That's where you want your tape to be. And you want this to be a snug measurement. So she is 23 and 1 8. Our next measurement is eye to mouth. And this is from the outside corner of the eye to the top of the lips. She is 12, 12 inches. Our next measurement is from the corner of the eye to the widest part of the jaw. And this is eight and a half. And this is one where when you're going, you kind of have to feel for it and then pinch off. The next one is ear length. So this one, you're measuring from the base of the ear, so she's a little fuzzy, so it's a little hard to see, <laughs> to the tip of the ear. So she is six and a half. Okay. The next is neck length. So we do two neck length measurements. One where her head is level with her withers. So you'll go from the pole to the highest point of her withers. So here she would be 32 and 3 quarters. Then the next measurement we take is with her head all the way to the ground. And one thing you can do is you can use treats. You can use that handy dandy clipboard that you got. <laughs> And she is 40 and 3 quarters. So that's the neck measurement. And the next thing we do is throat latch circumference. So this, again, is another snug measurement right here. She's 26 inches. The next is neck face. And again, this is right in front of the withers and kind of Slightly draped, but not like not like super tight. And she's 46. And the next measurements we do are three heights. So we do a height at the withers, height at the croup, and a height at the dock. And this is one that it's useful to have your scribe call, <laughs> especially if you have a really tall horse. And one thing that I like to do when I'm taking the height, so it's a lot faster, is I'll stand on the 30 of my measuring tape. And I'll point it so that my 30 is on the inside of my foot. And this way I have a piece that I can hold on to and also call my measurement. So yeah, make sure you subtract that 30 from whatever you see. So she did that. So then our next one is at the croup. So that's kind of right here. And then our next measurement is at the dock, which is right at the base of the tail. 78 minus 30, which is 48. Perfect. So then our next one is tail length. So for tail length, you're measuring from the base of the tail to the bony end of the tail. So we're not measuring all of this. We're just feeling for the bone. And again, this is another one of those you kind of pinch off. So she has a tail of 17 and 3 quarters. The next is our withers to croup. So we do two measurements here. We do one that's straight and then one that's contoured. So the one that's straight, highest point of the withers, and I like to feel down the spine till I find the bumpy part of the croup. And the straight is 33 and a quarter. And then to make this more accurate for the contour, she's like right in the middle. She's 34. 
and that just helps to make that a little more accurate. Then the next measurement we have is croup to dock. So again, from that same point to the base of the tail, and she's 12. And now I don't remember. Chest width. Chest width. OK, yeah. So our next measurement is chest width. And this is one that you have to be really careful with the safety. You don't want to be under here taking this measurement. And you want to feel for the bony protrusions of the shoulder. So when you're taking this, it's a little tricky. You're feeling for that. You line up here, and you're at 13 and a half is the chest width for her. Then we do her heart girth. So heart girth is right behind the elbow on the top of the withers, and you want this to be pretty snug. And this is, she's 62 and a half. Then we do barrel girth. So this is the widest point of your horse. And this is another one. You'll see them take their breaths so the change will be different. And you kind of try to find when they inhale, but you want to take that measurement. So she's 71. Okay. So now we'll move to the legs. <laughs> So for the forearm length, you're feeling for the elbow. So sometimes if you have a really heavily muscled horse, this might be a little difficult to find. But on her, it's right here. Some horses won't like this, so you do have to be a little careful. I'll come stand this way. So you want to feel for the elbow to the back of the knee, to the bottom of the knee joint. So she's got a little bit of a bump right here, and that's where you're measuring. So she's... 15 and 3 quarters. Then cannon circumference, or not cannon circumference, cannon length is from that back of the knee joint to where your ergot is. So she is 10 and a quarter. Then you'll take cannon circumference, which is just at the middle of the cannon, and that's 6 and 3 quarters. Then we'll do pastern length, so this is the bottom of the pastern joint to the top of your coronet. And so since it is winter time, she's a little hairy, <laughs> you do want to move the hair just to see where your can coronary band is. And she's three and three quarters for pastern length. Then you'll do pastern circumference. And she's six and a half. So again, you can see, you want to stay this side, not in front, <laughs> in case a horse does that. Then the next one is your coronary circumference. So just around the coronary band. She's 12 and a half. And then you'll do hoof length. So again, in the front of the hoof to the coronary band. So she's two and three quarters. Then we'll move to the pack leg. So the next measurement is Gaskin length. And you're gonna feel for the stifle joint. Horses really don't like this one, usually. <laughs> So you'll kind of feel for that little bump, and then you're going to measure to the middle of the hawk. And she's 18 and 3 quarters for that length. And then the next length, okay. you do want to make sure your horse is standing square when you're doing all of these measurements. Your next measurement is going to be your high cannon circumference. And this is where you're going to measure So again, you're feeling for the bottom of the joint to the top of the coronary band. So she's three and one eighth. And then pastern circumference is six and three quarters. And coronary circumference is 12 and five eighths. And then her hoof length is 
three. And these are all the measurements that you need to take on a horse. Okay, so one thing to remember when you are taking the measurements is it's a good idea to take them all from the left side. The only reason you'd ever want to take them from the right side was if your horse was swollen or stocked up where you think it'll interfere with what their true measurement is of that leg. So now we're going to show you how to pull hair to get the DNA that we need for our study. So again, always standing to the side of the horse. You never want to do this behind because some horses do have different reactions to getting their horse tail hair pulled. And I like tail hair because it's easier to grab. But you can pull it from the mane if you want as well. And I like to pull it kind of from the underside of the tail. And you'll do kind of a, an interesting, like a medium sized chunk. Not too much. About that much. And what I like to do is I like to wrap it around my hand like this and then you just pull down. So that when you pull out your hair, you get all of these beautiful hair bulbs. And that's what we need to get our DNA. And you can do this two or three times to get enough hair that we need for the study. So to use this hair, when you're taping it to your sheet, you wanna make sure you tape it with the hair bulbs pointed up, and then you apply the label. Just like that. And that's it. Now you're all done. Thanks for participating.